Hello, all my loyal Philosophical Gospel Podcast listeners. I am attempting to spearhead, is that the right word, or something like that, um, a new idea that I wanted to try out, which was conducting some solo podcasts in accordance, in accordance, no, no, in accompaniment with my existing interview-based podcast, simply for the sake that I feel like I have some things I'd like to say, maybe you would like to hear me say them, um, or maybe neither of those two things are true, and that will be the thus the experiment conducted. Um, my attempt at this is to help elucidate some of the delusional facets of the reality that we kind of exist within, which seems to be the reality of like a 12, 13-year-old girl, potentially a spoiled 12, 13-year-old girl, and a delusion that has like gripped, I don't know, everybody. Um, lots of people, or at least lots of people on the internet, and that seems to be representative of the entire population according to all the people who commentate on it. And so what I wanted to do was try to interject some of my solo thoughts in the week, throughout the week as I upload one or two interviews a week. I wanted to kind of continue in the vein of my conversations I generally have, but just by myself and over kind of going over some of the things that are going on in society that strike me as rather appalling, rather odd, um, inverse to the right way, so unorthodox, I guess, would be the proper way of ex explicating it. Um, I understand doing this is at the risk of losing some of my existing subscribers due to the nature of my views on some of these subjects. However, that's again goes back to the whole point of trying out this grand experiment, which is to report on the news, um, as if everybody already doesn't do that. Um, and on that note, a topic that has permeated the fabric of society in such a way and has taken over as the orthodox way of viewing sex and gender is the fact that people can be one gender or another or just either one or whichever one they want whenever they want because they want to. And if you don't like that, then it's, you're an idiot or something like that. And that's just not right. That's not true. If that's true, then we're all screwed um, because it says – in the biblical corpus that God fashioned man and woman in his own image. Well, I guess man in his own image and then woman was created from man. Regardless, um, there's something very fundamentally unique to our society that has to do with spoken word, language, linguistics, the image, and then the archetype. Um, and one of my favorite theologians, he likes to describe the the idea of the person being divinized throughout life, getting closer to God as getting as an image returning to its archetype, like um, the man becoming more and more holy throughout his life in the pursuit of divine things and intellectual pursuits that are in the spiritual side of things and less on the material, that in that pursuit, one is drawn closer to the archetype of divinity, the archetype of God, who, um, who we are trying to become or who are we trying to be more like. Um, and in doing so, it is critical that the right pairing or the right ordering of male, female, the basic tenets of life and the human person is kept in order. And any attempt to invert those most fundamental aspects of our being, such as sex and gender, whichever, whatever gender even means, um, in doing so, you completely collapse the very fundamental cornerstones that society rests upon. Because if you confuse gender and sex with people and you start differentiating the two – and then you start incorporating into that the encouragement of it through virtue signaling as if you're a better person because you happen to be able to, you know, your gender is mutable throughout your life. So your identity is one way this today and one way the next. So now you're a anarchist, pansexual, pseudo lesbian who promotes narcissistic gain of virtue or something like that. That's not good. That's what's happening. For some reason, people tell you that. It's normal for those people to participate in that way in society, that it's normal for people to pay a person trapped in their own body. Um, these things are not normal. These things are actually the opposite of normal. And so when they become normal, when they take over the center, so to speak, the fringes become the center, well, then the whole thing collapses and there's nowhere to even locate a center anymore, if that makes any sense. And so... I'm utterly confused by how and where people just got brownie points and gold stars all over their chalkboard because they decided that they were going to be a female even, they're, even though they're chromosomally a male. I don't understand where the accolades lie for that kind of treatment, nor do I think that it's appropriate to, to 
dismantle hierarchies with your with your language and with your ideas, but meanwhile set up another hierarchy that's predicated upon the basis of identity. And if that identity is nested in certain elements of society, such as mutable gender, well, then you're elevated above other people, not based on competence or reason, but based simply upon your ability to tr transfigure yourself um, on the exterior, on the phenotypical side, into something other than you actually were born to be. So, anyways, that being said, I'm, I'm, my premise is, is that the deconstruction of society through the inverting of language by misplacing the unorthodox image of man with woman and vice versa, you're creating a fundamental delusional reality, a, um, basically a, um, a type of being in the world that is completely conducive to the fragmenting of people's psyches and to the point of mass, mass hysteria as far as psychosis is concerned. And Carl Jung even said that one of the biggest worries he would have for the future of humanity would be mass psychosis, a mass delusion that takes people over. This is said in the biblical corpus as well. Um, and so my, my, my pretense on the whole entire thing is that it's, it's fundamentally wrong and it's fundamentally contributing further and further to the fragmenting of teenage girls, especially as you're seeing suicide rates increase, you're seeing depression and anxiety all of these things go way up and it's because the pressure is placed on these young female girls in order to emulate that which is being shown to them and if thing that which is to emulate is actually fundamentally the transfiguration of the transmutation of your genitals and of your body to match whatever your true self has then that's probably not going to work um it's not going to work for the health of girls of men of anybody um and Additionally, what do you mean by true self? That if you know what the true self actually is, then you know more than any psychologist that's ever lived. That's, that's the endeavor of fundamental psychology is to learn and locate the location of the true self and where it is. And if you seem to happen to know exactly what that is, that way you can match your external appearance to it, then you've solved the holy grail of all psychological uh, endeavors that have been sought after. That's the goal is to locate the self. What is it? What does it look like? Is it representative of the body? Is it partial to the soul? Is it all of these things. And so there's no possible way that they're immutable and you can separate the two. So separating body and soul and self and body and mind, none of you can even tell me what the mind is, where it's located. You don't even know half of what you're talking about. So you're fundamentally incorrect to even begin to postulate on things such as gender being immutable and separate from sex. So it's very detrimental to go and proclamate these kind of claims on subject matter that you have no idea about. And then to call yourself the director of wisdom, as the new Hershey's commercial says, it says, hi, this is some dude that's actually a girl that's actually maybe a dude but likes guys. And he said that he was the director of wisdom and outreach or something. It's like, what? No, you're not. You can't actually be director of wisdom and also be an idiot. So you're actually degrading the value of the word wisdom to begin with. So basically it's a giant delusion. But I'm saying like these, these pop culture companies like Hershey's, Coca-Cola, they put out these ads and they have some dude that's actually a girl but it's actually a man guy and he's on there and he wants to marry a baby. And see, you're not going to do that. That's not going to happen. And if it does, it's insane. And then you call the people who call it out like they're insane. But actually, you're insane. So the point is, is to clarify the insanity lies with the people who think they can be men when they're actually women and women when they're actually men. Because you're not. You can't be. It's impossible. And so my 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 proposition is, is that if you continue to do that, you are doing harm unto the children, which is the ultimate thing we need to not do. And so whenever you harm children by convincing them that they're a different gender than within their body, even against their parents' will, you're doing psychological trauma unto them intentionally without regard for the impact of the suffering that they'll have to endure later in life. So my point is, with this exposition, is once more to end this delusion, to prove that this delusion is in, it's just not, it's not tenable. It's not a tenable proposition to follow. And so it's critical that we must acknowledge that the people who generally make these claims are not the people who are on the side of an existence of a soul. They usually don't. Usually it's atheist people who don't buy into the existence of the immaterial or the existence of the soul to begin with. And so to presume that there's another self inside of you that can decide what your external appearance should phenotypically represent would be a misnomer at best, even if you held these philosophical views, because you must acknowledge the existence of a soul and an eternal aspect of your being that's immaterial, which most of the people on the side of these kinds of issues do not hold that view. They hold a view that's atheistic, that's anti-religion, anti-Christian, and anti-establishment as far as what the conservative 
and traditional values are that lie within our society. And so you can't deny the existence of the soul. You can't deny the existence of God and also proclaim to be a different gender than you were born into. Because then that means there was this ultimate plan that you were supposed to be born into. And your soul, as it represented it immaterially, has some other external experience, experience ec, um, presentation that it would like to demonstrate. However, you, you maintaining an atheist view and a view that there is no soul side by side with the view that you are born in the wrong body actually is completely and utterly in, untenable. It has no grounding by which it can rest upon. And so to, to begin to then prop, propagate that view outwardly towards others um, in such a way in such a way that its doctrine, its dogma, its fact even, when gender doesn't even exist, it's a made-up term to describe temperamental differences in personality. How, how else are you getting a, diff, a derivative between gender and sex? It's just a made-up word to describe temperamental orientations of different sexes towards the other sex's proclivity to do certain things. So if I'm a man, but I have interest in basket weaving, well, that might be a more feminine sport. Underwater basket weaving, even more so. So if I want to go be an underwater basket weaver, but I'm also a man, well, that's okay. I have a temperamental difference there, but I'm still a man. So I don't go and change, I don't go and castrate myself or castrate other people's kids so that they can equally look like an underwater basket weaver. So the whole point is, is even more far-reaching than it is my opinion. It's that you're, you're indoctrinating children into ideology, into lies, into delusion that's been propagated ever since Skinner, ever since Foucault, ever since these pedophilic philosophers from the French history have been had a proclivity to postulate on things like this. And they've done it through creating sexual spectrums. They've done it through the... Horrible study of children um, in sexual type of arrangements and scientific environments. Um, this ideology has trickled down consistently through, um, undergirded by this idea that there's this fundamental motivating force in the world that orients people upwards and toward, well, downwards and towards um, a pattern of thought that is that everything, 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 everybody does is predicated upon power. And then that everything that's related to personal identity is ultimately being looked for and hunted down by those people in power. And that whenever you need to assert your identity, it can only be an identity that's ultimately centering around your sexuality. Which these ideas actually do in their origins, if you want to look it up, actually do go back to somebody like B.F. Skinner, somebody like Michel Foucault. These people started this entire thing, and in that pursuit of that thing, they were subjecting children and lots of adolescents and things to sexual torment and trauma in order to garner the media, I mean, the data that they ended up getting in order to fabricate these narratives. And these narratives have propagated into and grabbed hold of the ethos of the American life, and they've done so clandestinely and in such a way that people are now gaslit into a, re a delusional reality that actually doesn't portray truth. And so... Along with that, the postmodernist thinking has undergirded everything and also placed truth as subjective and beauty as subjective, and these transcendental values have become fundamentally rearticulated as some sort of like thing that's located in your own locus of consciousness, to where your own locus of consciousness, your framework of viewing in the world, actually is the only sole determiner of goodness, truth, and beauty, and right order. And that's not true, and that's a, um, a message for another time, but what we see is... Um, something crazy going on where like things like drag queen story hour. I, I was talking to somebody about this the other day and they said, um, they said that it's normal to dance around as in females clothing as a man around like five year old, six year old kids. And I was like, that's not normal. And they were like, no, it is normal. And you're racist for thinking it's not. And I was like, man, that doesn't make, that's fundamentally incorrect. Just because you're anti people pedophiles and it actually turned out that these people that were at these drag queen story hours in several cases were convicted sex offenders so people are telling me that they would like convicted sex offenders dancing around their children at drag queen story hour and that if i don't like that then i'm actually psychopathic so see see what we have here folks is a fundamental delusion we have a complete and utter delusion and it's all in the name of equity and inclusion as the primary virtues that trickle down from from sorts and so you think of goodness as this transcendental value that's up here and it comes down and, and it radiates downward into all kinds of right ordered forms well they have taken the image and the word and mix match them and in doing that mismatching little operation there 
um, it's kind of like doing the mathematical operations but not following that PEMDAS thing where you've got parentheses, exponents, multiplication. Well, nobody really knows why that order has to occur that way, but we do know that if it's done not in that order, you get the incorrect product. Product is not right. And so this is what's happening here is when you put the image and the word together and the archetype that represents those, the archetype, the image, word, or something, archetype, word, image, and you have that, that pyramid of actualization for proper ordered in the universe, well, if you, if you reverse those by polluting language and inverting words to represent the wrong symbols, well, now you've gotten yourself into a situation to where people who would like to be supportive and empathetic and loving and kind and helpful can no longer do so because when they do, they're just labeled as insane. And so if the proper psychometrician was to go investigate the psyche of a 12, 13-year-old girl who thought she needed a gender transition, he may determine that it might be right not to affirm the gender, but rather to disaffirm it and then to seek psychotherapeutic help through talk therapy or cognitive behavioral therapy or some other mechanism by which you would go about remedying such a problem. A problem that I like to think of as the malady of reality itself right now. And it's fundamentally being recognized in other places such as Britain and England. And in those cases in England and Britain where it's being recognized, they are making steps in order to decrease and minimize the amount of people that are being transitioned from gender to gender. They're actually now noticing that this is actually not going to work, that there's lots of lawsuits being turned on to these medical doctors who, who facilitate these kinds of operations. They're doing it to children and underage Minors, they're putting them on puberty blocking pills, they're putting them on chemical castration agents, they're putting them, they're cutting off the breasts of young girls, they're doing all these types of things and calling it normal, it's not normal. And the fact that there has to be an argument proposed for it being bad is ridiculous and also makes my attempt at doing it really fallacious almost because it's just obvious and inherent to human consciousness that there is no possible way you would be born in the wrong body. Nor could you know that if you were, because you have no idea what the actual true self is that you're representing. So instead of sending other people's kids to drag queen story hours where men, grown men dressed up as women, dance around your children to indoctrinate them into fake ideology that's delusional at its core, is not a solution. It's actually completely and utterly wrong. It's, if it's anything, it's child abuse beyond all imaginability. Those people should be locked up, thrown in jail, felonies. They should be put in jail. There's no possible way that that's an accurate way of going about doing the world. And then when there's a response, of course, everybody's heralded as, as something, you know, something's fundamentally wrong with the critics of it. I mean, does that, am I, I hope I'm not the only one that has these kinds of potential thoughts about the nature of reality as it's being presented by the left in this country. But like I said, it goes back to fundamentally to French history, it goes back to some of those, not all of it, but a lot of it goes back to the French revolutionaries and during that time when reason dominated all and there was no other undergirding fabric that held up the society besides reason, well then it allows the fringe to come in and monopolize the center. And when the center gets dislocated and nobody knows where it actually is, the triangle that we see, a rectangle, is that a rectangle? Yeah, a rectangle. There's like a center there's a triangle inside of it, too, kind of like the fifth trivian man. And there's a dot in the middle where the heart of the man would be. Well, the heart has to stay in its place. There can be some people who think the heart's actually located in the head, but they're not in the center. They're not dominating the dialogue. And therefore, they have no way to actually fracture the center apart. And so what we're seeing is the fringe taking the center and the center becoming dis disassembled and disfragmented, basically, because of this. So what I, what I think is is that these drag queen story hours, these promotion of transgender transgender ideology, all of these kinds of things are inevitably f just fallacious and flawed and erroneous thinking driven by people who think that power is the predicate for all action in the world. And so therefore, because everybody's always trying to assume or take power from them, they're then allowed to act insane in order to take it back because it's a constant power struggle. These are the same people that fail to see the reality of the fact that cooperative, altruistic interactions amongst people are actually what drives the construction and the ultimate evolution of a safe society. That it's not power predicated. There's not people just looking around to try to find what next group to to you know to completely and utterly stranglehold on. And we know this. We know this to be the case. It's in primates. It's in all kinds of things. You can see the same altruistic, kind, generous 
dominant males become the leaders of those places, not the most um, annoying, narcissistic, stupid ones. And so it's, it's a critical aspect of reality to try to make sure that the image and the word and the archetype itself, the archetype of what God intended the man and the woman to be, not be mixed. If you mix those two, you start fund, you start, f you know, fiddling with some of the most temperamental aspects of a well-developed society. Additionally, um, since that's a microcosmic element of the symbolic that's being mismatched and misplaced, the Ruth Bader Ginsburg statue that was placed on top of the New York courthouse, have you guys seen it? It is atrociously ugly and hideous and dumb. And they actually took down Muhammad, the lawgiver for millions of Muslims, uh, and they placed a satanic Medusa-looking tentacle-headed statue at the top of it. And it has some uh, aphorism on the bottom of it in Latin, I believe, that indicates the uh, desire for the libs to promote um, child sacrifice, which is abortion. So basically, child sacrificing, abortion-loving statues have been replaced in lieu of Muhammad on top of a courthouse, something like that. This is a good microcosmic example of an inversion of symbology and an inversion of word and ultimately representative of the embodied ethos of a society as it comes to materialize. And so a smaller microcosmic example of this is that statue particularly is taking something beautiful and making something ugly out of it. And any time destruction of the sacred or destruction of the beautiful begins to occur within a civilized group of people, you're seeing a fundamental rearrangement of symbology, an inversion, a clown world type um, pivot. And so you've inverted the pyramid of actualization to a deactualizing, a de fragmentating of this narrative. And so I bring up the statue to make it more representative of if the biological sex was a statue and it was perfectly embodied in an archetypal image that God had placed here for us, a.k.a. the man and the woman, and then you took those and put them on a building, and then you replaced a man and a woman with a tentacle-headed satanic worshiper, and then a dead baby. And then you put those two together and then called everybody crazy who thought that wasn't normal. So the premise of this point is, is that these types of maneuvers within a wide society that's politically charged and politically motivated is all being done in the guise in the name of equity and inclusion. And those two kind of things are inachievable in any, any society. Equity will never be achieved for all. Christ said the poor will always be with you. You'll never have a complete utopic vision that can be manifest in any way possible. And so the next premise of it would be that if you can't have that utopic society, then we're going to force it to be that way by simply redistribution of wealth. Redistribution of wealth also obviously doesn't treat the underlying, sim the underlying causes of the symptoms that are presented. So just because you redistribute wealth into a place... It doesn't. This has been documented in data and all kinds of political, socio-political research that whenever you just redistribute wealth in order to overcome the power, remember the power, the power part that's predicating all the other stuff that justifies all the other stuff. Well, that power, if you redistribute the wealth throughout society, it just ends up back where it was. It it always will. This is a known fact, um, economically, physically, um, psychologically, and so because of that. You can't redistribute wealth into an area and just dump more money into it and expect the morality to come out of that. Morality isn't synthesized through some redistribution of actually wealth. And so on top of that, giving more and redistributing more wealth around a society doesn't politically or socioculturally lead to a revivification of morality. In fact, instituting laws against behavior that's wrong is what does that. Um, the law is a teacher. The law is also a living thing. And so the more respect paid to a law, the more you will get – or the more laws made in support of morality will, in fact, encourage moral action. That's a common misnomer by the libs is that you actually can't legislate morality. Well, you can. Um, that's actually what morality is, is it's a legislative thing. Whenever you pass a law that says murder is illegal, you're not passing a law. You're passing a moral decree. It's no different than that. And so if we were already given the law from Moses to not kill, but yet – the U.S. government codifies a passage that says murder is illegal. Well, they're passing, they're codifying a moral principle into law. It, they're one and the same. They're indifferent. They're just different words for the same manifestation of a, of a code. And so there's no difference there. And so in order to keep these things correct, you do have to have laws. You can't just release all the criminals. You can't just release all these things. And in doing so, you will have more havoc wreaked upon your society from the fact that you have done that. 
And so I think it's just critically important to realize that there's a microcosmic element of the macrocosm. And when you look at gender and then you look at the satanic inversion of symbology on top of courthouses and the promotion of um, child sacrifice to idols, which is abortion, when you promote that and you normalize that kind of symbology and then you invert the language and you take the man and the female and the archetype and you swap them around, then you get some sort of crazy diluted reality where everybody is basically existing solely upon the idea that if they proclaim a virtue and equity and inclusive sake, then they are now anointed ones. They are now King David's descendants by direct relation, and they are allowed to assemble themselves, 12 new tribes of Israel, and march into your home and basically overtake your children's identity and ideas. This is not going to work. This is not going to happen. Um, we already know this. We already know that there's not going to get off the ground because we have people like Governor DeSantis. We have people like hopefully Trump would actually do. We have people who instead of having – what's his name? The transgender dude, Dylan or whatever, at the White House for some sort of like celebratory event to celebrate this psychopathic child abuse, we actually need to start having those people not at the White House. We need to stop promoting – the changing of genders between people, it, we need to stop acting as if it's a virtue signal to do so, and we need to call a spade a spade. There's a reason that this cliche spade a spade exists, and it's because calling something as it is, calling something as the symbolic physical representation of what the word means is critically important to a well-balanced, functioning, and even ultimately successful society. And so you act as if this one way is the right way, call the people who are right, wrong. Well, this is a 1984 you've got a 1984 deal going on and now you've claimed that you've actually got a 2023 thing going on, but we don't know the difference. Nobody knows the difference. And this is really a test run of my solo podcast kind of thing. And I didn't really have a lot of notes, nor do I know where to start. So I kind of took it off uh, on my own as a see how this works kind of deal. Like I did with my interview based podcast, which was like, I just started doing them and started allowing it to find it, find itself. So as abhorrent as these views may be considered by some of those who watch my current podcast, I apologize. I'm not going to change those. So you can unsubscribe or whatever. I hope you don't. I hope you follow. I hope you subscribe. But if you don't, I don't care. Um, and likewise, I hope that the content delivered isn't too ambiguous or hard to understand. But likewise, please comment and let me know. And what I'll do is, is I will tailor my show to better match what the watchers would like to see. So, of course, if there's complete demand for me to never do these again, then, of course that maybe I'll start a different channel or something like that. But I'm trying to feel out the way in which to go about creating an opinion-based solo podcast. And so this is my first episode and first attempt at that. So thank you for joining.